Hello and welcome back to my Let's Build a Titan Rooster series. This is part five, Betafly and BL Heli Configurator. Um, hopefully I'll also do the final assembly and any of the sort of bench testing that I'll need to be able to do. So today we'll be doing a lot of stuff on the computer, so I'll be sharing my screen now. So the first thing we need to do is get the Betafly Configurator. Um, to do that you go into your favorite browser, um, hopefully it's not Edge, and you look up Betafly Configurator and you select the GitHub version and you can then download whichever the most relevant version for your particular computer is. You'll also need BL Heli and you can then download that from GitHub as well. Both of them have Chrome apps. These um, are being discontinued so while I'm going to use the Chrome app for BL Heli because I just haven't installed the uh, configurator for that I will be using the local app for uh, the Betaflight configurator. So once you've installed that, you simply open Betaflight. Um, you will also need to make sure you've uploaded your drivers, so get hold of the latest drivers. These allow you to plug your quad into your PC and get information out of it, so make sure you've got those. That's where most of your problems end up. Right, so now we're in Betaflight. We can select Connect. We're on COM port 4. Normally it says 1 um, when you first log on, and if you've got something connected, it generally comes up with four or another number, so that's how I know it's working. I hit connect. This brings me onto the landing screen, so this is where my I set my accelerometer and reset settings. I'm not gonna do that at the moment, it's not relevant for what I'm doing at this moment in time. So I'm gonna go straight to configuration. So I make sure it's in quad X, because that's what I've got here. I make sure the ESCs are set to D shot 600, because anything above that my ESCs will not take at this moment in time. I've set my sampling rates to be 32 kilohertz. So the samples are the loops that it runs around. So effectively, every second, it, every sort of well, every certain amount of time, it, um, it's doing a decision on how what the position of your craft is. The higher that rate is, the more accurate that data is. So there's a better explanations for it, but that's a fairly overall view. Um, the accelerometer, the barometer. I've called my craft Bantam because it's a uh, rooster. Um, I've selected SBUS because that's what my preferred communication for my receiver is. Um, I've selected soft serial, which I don't quite know why I've done. I think that's because I normally have a uh, smart audio, so I normally need that, but I don't really need that in the scenario. I don't need telemetry because I'm not actually doing telemetry. I actually don't need soft serial. I don't need OLED displays because I'm not using them. I do need OSD. I'm not going to permanently select their mode because I often use... Uh, um, the other modes to get me out of trouble if, if I'm doing anything weird. Um, so that's just a get me home safe option. Um, turn anti gravity on. There's better descriptions of that. Effectively, it just gives you a better quality of um, it just adjusts your PIDs. Um, dynamic filtering um, because everyone's doing it. I'm not going to worry about the beeper stuff, but I'll probably turn off various ones of those. So once I've done that, I'm going to hit save and reboot. That then disconnects and saves the settings. I'm then going to hit connect again. And I'm just going to check power. That's all fine. And it may need to do some minor adjustments to that, but no, I can't do that until my battery's in. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is go into BL Heli and make sure my ESCs are all up to date. Right, so now I need to go and make sure my ESCs are fully up to date. So I'm going to go to my apps on my Chrome. As I said, there is a local version of this, but I'm just going to use this because it's easy and quick. So I'm going to connect to four. But what I need to do before I do that is I need to plug a battery in because the ESCs are not powered by the five volts that come off my flight controller. So I'm going to find my battery. And I'm going to plug that in. One of the first things to make sure of before I do that is that I didn't have any props on at that time. So that is critical. Press connect, select read setup. So that's now reading my ESCs. I'm then gonna check that these are the latest versions. So I will select flash all down the bottom here. It will automatically select my ESC versions. I've never changed that. I'm just gonna leave that as it is and I'm going to select the most recent version, so I'm going to select the official one, and I'm then going to hit flash, and that will then busily flash its way through each one of my ESCs. Right, 
Right, once all that's done, I will go and check the motor directions slightly later on, but for now, that means they are all up to date and ready to go. So I can disconnect and the ESCs all reset and they all buzz in synchronous. Right, so the next step for me is to bind my transmitter and the receiver on my rooster. Um, so what I'm going to do is I pair up my Tyrannus. Um, I like the Tyrannus, it is a nice little um, transmitter. Um, there are cheap ones nowadays, this was the one that was sort of out when I was um, looking around. They're pretty good, I've updated the gimbals on this and set it up how I like it, so I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to go into menus, models, and I click on there, create a new one. Select multi rotors. So channel one is throttle. Roll. Channel two. Pitch. And your. Are they ready to go? Yes, they're all okay. Sorry, long press to confirm. There we go. So that gives me model five. Uh, so let's go into that. Oh, no, wrong press. Still the wrong press. There we go. Model name. So I will put that in there. What I want to do is I want to put it into bind mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find on the list. Go. So I want to put bind. Ooh. So I select bind. So what I'm going to now do is I will to do this. So I'm going to leave that in that. So I want to find my transmitter. I'm going to, hopefully you can see here. So there's a little button just here that I'm going to use. And if I press this button, I hold this button. Like that, and I then plug my USB cable into my computer. That'll power up my uh, flight controller and my receiver, and I should then be able to bind that. That's now in bind mode. So you can see that by the fact that it's got a little green light on it. So I'm now going to press bind on my transmitter. Okay, got a flashing light. So that's suggesting that that might have bound. Press that on bind. Then unplug that from the USB from the machine. Power it back up again. I've then got a green light. Which suggests that I am bound, but I haven't got any data on my transmitter at the moment so that's looking promising. So my receiver is now bound to my controller and my ESCs are now fully up to date so what I'm going to now do is connect um, so my flight controller is now up and running so I'm just going to go make sure that my receiver is receiving signals so as you can see on there the little drone is moving around my throttle is moving my yaw is moving for some reason I have an Axis, uh, an Auxiliary 12 that's moving. I haven't quite figured that out yet. So I'm not going to go about through how to fully tweak and configure all of this. At the moment it's just getting everything on here to make sure that's all working. Um, I will do some more fine tuning, but for date I'm just going to show you the real basics of this. So that's all set up and working. Um, I can see that there is 15.9 volts, so that looks... I have a battery checker that I'm going to check the battery with which I have now there we go so I've got a battery checker that I'm just going to use so I use an ISDT um, battery checker because they are excellent and if I plug that in that will tell me that the my battery I'm testing this with is in 15.9 
15.93 so that is absolutely fine so if I was wrong I would adjust that on here by just adjusting the scale until it's the same so the way I've always found easiest to do this is I just get a battery plug it in have a battery checker on the um, balance output and then that gives me what it should be so I should get the same information so that's my battery sorted um, I can check my motors are working so if I press this little button and I make sure my props are off as it says here um, I can go to the master throttle and I can start the motors from sin. Now at this point what you want to be able to do is you need to be able to get your drone set up on a space that you can you're not in any risk of doing anything stupid um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put the motors onto as slow a speed as I can get them onto with them actually initiating that'll do and I'm just going to touch each of the motors and make sure they are spinning the right direction so front number four that's spinning the right direction that one's spinning the right direction yep spinning the right direction and it's spinning the right direction so they are all fine so I don't need to make any adjustments if I did um, I would make those changes in the BL Heli Suite and just reverse the directions so I can turn that down. So that is all my motors all set up. So moving on to mode from motors, I'm just going to go and set my modes. So modes are where you control your arm switch. So I have already configured a two-part arm, which has a pre-arm button and an actual arm. So when I press those buttons, it will do it. The reason I've set a pre-arm is simply because the fact that if you're walking through a field and you suddenly catch your arm switch, having something that stops you from slicing your fingers off is probably a really good idea. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to just set uh, angle mode and on and horizon mode, and I'm going to set them to auxiliary two. Um, I've already set my auxiliaries on my transmitter. I'm not going to go into that um, because there's a, that's a whole video in in its entirety. Um, so I'm just going to set those up. The default position will be that, so that would make it, so that would be acro mode, angle mode, horizon mode. Um, so now I'm going to just make sure that I have got on here the, where are we, flip over after crash, which is called, um, which is called turtle mode. So I'm going to set that to, I think it's, Three, no, not three, four, there we go, four. So four, and I'm also going to put fail safe on and beeper. So this is just my standard setup. So this will go on to three. So beeper, so fail safe is there and beeper is extended to the end. So I can fail safe and so I can go to a level where there's just a fail safe and a beeper so that's where I control my controls for for that one uh, other than that a lot of these other settings I very rarely use I mean I should have black box on here I haven't at this moment in time um, so I will just work with what I have at the moment right so the last thing I need to do is on this uh, ports channel so I'm not going to use any of the telemetry parts I'm not going to use any additional sensors um, because I don't need to. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to set UART5 to connect to a, apparently a tramp setting, which I believe is what I need for my um, Matek uh, video transmitter. So that should, in theory, work. So I hit save and reboot. That should now engage. They're equivalent to smart audio. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but effectively that should allow me to control my settings from my flight controller and from my OSD so that should be great. Right so the final thing I want to be able to do from uh, Bead Flight for just for the moment is I want to set my OSD up so I'm going to select OSD and you will see that it's covered in loads and loads of junk that I really don't really have an interest in. I'm going to turn off that. Main battery voltage I'm going to keep. Crosshairs can come off. Artificial horizon no. Uh, timer to no, flight mode no, craft name yes, throttle position no, VTX channel no, current draw sometimes useful but not really that useful, GPS speed don't have, GPS altitude, 
Uh, we might as well see what that's like. We're going to turn off the, the PIDs, power, turn that off, PID rate profile, warnings, average cell voltage is useful. Turn those off, debug off. Uh, what have we got left? Uh, so what's this bar here? So we want to turn off the, well, what is that one there? I don't want it, whatever it is. Main battery voltage? No. Timer, craft name, current draw, altitude. Ah, all the other things that I completely forgot. Uh, turn that off. Home direction? No. New heading? No. ESC temperatures? None of these. We don't need any of those. There we go. Right, so, and let's turn off the logo because we definitely don't need that. So, flight time I always have down in the bottom corner because that's useful. Time on, not really that useful, I don't care. Um, craft name, I normally have in the middle just so I know what I'm flying and so I can find that it's me. Current draw, meh. Um, normally, so it's normally things like that. I turn off current draw. Uh, I'm going to put altitude in just because I'm interested to see what it does. Um, and I'm going to take current, current draw. Why have you not gone away? Um, so I want average cells per volt, uh, average cells, that's important to me and that's important to me. So I want them out of the center of my screen and that should give me everything that I want to have. Um, alarms, battery capacity, so turn that down to my normal flight, so about 1300. Uh, I definitely don't want an altitude alarm because I just don't want that at the moment. Um, so once I've done that and my buzzer stopped beeping, that should be it. Right, so my first lesson here is going to be to make sure that my I can turn off my OSD. So apparently the way you turn off the OSD on a Fox here is you press and hold the top button. There we go, right. And you can go down to name, you can turn that off, you want time off, and power off, exit. Exit, there we go. Right, so that's how you get rid of all of the stuff that comes to the camera. It does have an OSD, it's fine, I'm sure people use it, but I prefer the OSD that I have here on my screen, just so I know where everything is. Now looking at it from my perspective on this camera, I think I need to bring a few things in, so I'll go into beta flight and fix those.
and so everything's now put together. Everything's been mounted, so I've sorted out my section at the back here. So I've just put a little bit of tape just to tighten those up because they were a little bit loose. Um, I've had to do a couple of temporary fixes in the back here um, for fitting the buzzer and the uh, transmitter because I have some new bolts coming from uh, Armiton. They're going to send me some new bolts to replace the ones I've got, which is great. So I'll switch those out probably between now and, uh, well, hopefully when they get here. Um, just run tape around the ESCs with a little bit of um, soft mounting to sit underneath them just to keep them so they don't get too much vibration. Um, and I have fitted the camera, so that is the final build. I'm not going to fix the camera, uh, camera angle yet. I will do that probably slightly later on, but that looks reasonably close. I like to run the same camera angle as I'm running on here, which I think this is a 35, so this will run at about 35 degrees as well. So, final things to do, and the main reason why I've got this out here is hopefully when I power this all up, and transmitter on. Welcome to OpenTX. And now I also want to do my final bench tests. So if I plug that in. So everything's work, woken up and initialized. I just want to search for my signal, which I think is on race band. Oh, wrong button. Race band one. Take the lens cap off. So hopefully you can just about see that. You won't be able to make out what I've got on there, but I just want to check that I'm not going to get any interference um, when I power up the motors. So we're on the bench. We've got the battery separated away. Motors are clear. Definitely no props on. So what I want to do is I'm going to arm the motors. That's a good start. That seems to be working fine. Now if I They seem okay. Now if I roll left and roll right, forward and back, making all the right noises. As you see, if I'm doing um, your, I can just about get it to um, move. So that's that all sorted. And now the most important test, if I turn off the receiver, it will fail safe and initiate the buzzer. That is so very important when you're building drones. If you want to do one thing right, make sure it fails safe properly. So why you do that is because if that fails safe, if you lose signal, if something goes wrong, you want this to fall out of the sky. Um, you might, on a Phantom, you want it to return to you nicely and land with you because it's built to be autonomous. This will not fly without you putting commands into it, especially this one. So what you need to make sure of is that you put a failsafe on there, that when it loses power, loses signal, that it will just fall out of the sky and then you have it beeping so you can go and find it. So. The final thing I want to do uh, before I take it out to the field and fly is I'm going to do a hover test in my garden. So before I get out, I'm just going to quickly talk about props. So what I'm going to run on this for the to start with is I'm going to run some Dal Cyclone 5046Cs. Um, so they are a tri-blade plop prop <laughs> or a plop. Um, a so they are five, uh, five inches in diameter and they have a 46 degree. Um, pitch on them. So that's what I run on my other quads so I would, that's my good benchmark reference point to compare to my other drones. Um, I used to start on, um, I used to have a 43 um, degree pitch on my props, um, that was a good place to be. These just seem to work really nicely, they give you a lot of power and they give you really good response so I quite like these props. But what I will probably end up using at some point within this flight is the gem fan flashes. Um, so these are, I haven't got one in front of me, so these would be a, again, a tri blade prop with um, the 5.1, I think, so they're slightly bigger, and they run a 52 degree pitch, so they are a much steeper prop. Now, when you're running motors with as much torque as this, this shouldn't be a problem, but it will affect your battery life. So my starting point will be these, but I might try these out when I'm out in the field.